Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you guys are having a wonderful morning. I am having a good day. Um, so this is actually Sunday, and I'm going to try to record a couple day, a uh, couple videos for you guys today, because my husband's surgery is tomorrow, Monday. Um, it's actually today for you guys, but anyway. So I figured what we could do with this is we could um, go ahead and start working on the photo album that I'm making. And I went ahead and I cut up the paper. I didn't really intend to. I meant to do this on camera. Um, but it just, I cut it slightly bigger than the chipboard. And these are the pieces that we picked out yesterday. And um, I went ahead and cut those out using my trimmer. Um, and I just filed the edges smooth because with chipboard, it's very, um, very pointy. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover this. But before we do that, I want to basically put the album together using a trick. Not really a trick. It's just something that I've ran across quite a while back and I've been using it ever since when I create a book from scratch. Okay. And that's Tyvek tape. So I don't use Tyvek from like the envelopes or whatever because I know a lot of people use um, either they use the um, like mailers or like they'll buy the mailers or they will just recycle mailers that they have. Now this is kind of loud, so you might want to mute this part. Okay. So I'm actually going to do this backwards. I'm going to put it down here and then I'm going to flip it over so I can lay this down. And I want it just off of the spot or the, the cover. Like I don't want it snugged all the way up. Like you can see there's an ever so slight gap there. And that just makes it to where it can move a little bit freer. And I actually need to put a little bit more of a gap there. It's not going to be adequate. So this is going to be fun. Uh, no, that's going to rip my chipboard right in half. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to do this again, but I'm going to put a little bit bigger of a gap there. And again, my apologies for the loudness. It is loud. Um... But I love this stuff. This stuff is awesome. Now I'm going to flip it over and do it this way. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is, I think this is too big of a gap. This might work. Okay, what did you look like? I don't know. of a gap are you? I feel like that's the same as what I just had. So that's not going to work either. Um, what about my ruler? That's a decent gap. Normally I just eyeball it. But I'm trying to be precise with you guys. It's a pretty good gap. Alright. Now we're going to go this way and line it up vertically. All right. Oh. Oh, look at that. That is, that is good. Because you want movement. You want to be able to open your book. You don't want it to stay closed forever or open forever rather. Alright, loud again. Okay. 
and put it on the back here. And if you notice, I'm not going all the way to the bottom. I'm not wrapping the whole thing. I'm just putting a layer down. That's it. And I don't know if you could tell by me having to cut this, but one little bitty layer like this is more than enough because it is some sticky stuff and it does not like tearing. took my ruler hostage. All right. Oh, play fakes. Play fakes. All right. So now what we're going to do is take this sheet of paper here and put it right here on the edge. That's fine because we're going to cover that up anyway. Sorry, I just had to move a little bit. All right, so I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use Fabri-Tac. I'm going to put this stuff on the plastic part here. Uh, let's use Fabri-Tac first because I have heard that this stuff dries really fast. So we're going to do a combination of glues, which is good. It's all right. Uh, we're done with this, so I can put that away, and it's very sticky on the side, so I need to make sure to put it away from, hello, Vena, away from um, all my laces and such. I brought this over because I thought I would use it for the spacer, but it ended up being way too thin. Oh, you know what I could use it for them is squishing it all together, making sure it's all nice and copacetic in there once I lay this down. Oh, and by the way, I got my beads from Melissa. I'm pretty sure she sells those. Melissa Franks. She does not have an Etsy shop. Um, I think she use, uh, I think she sells them through her YouTube. Alright, so I'm gonna flip this over and I'm just gonna smooth it out. It's here, so I figured why not use it, right? Uh, I got this on Etsy a while back. I do not have a clue where it came from. I just know I got it on Etsy. Okay. All right. And then we're going to take the other side and do the same thing. So And I just write on here so I know um, what it is, like especially before cutting it. Okay. And I'm going to put this one. Against the edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you've got some up here on the top and some down here on the bottom, you are good. Smooth it all out up underneath there. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to miter this pretty sure is what that's called and I'm 
just going to take my scissors and cut that line right there that I'm drawing. Okay. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me a really nice corner piece. So it's not super bulky, it's not overlappy, it's, hello Xena again. Why are you in here? You're like never in here. Bloop. And, bloop. Okay, so. You can save those if you want. I'm probably not going to. We all know I don't save super teeny tiny pieces like that. Um, I just don't have the space for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the whole caboodle and do that. See? You just push it like that. I'm going to take the bottom, top, whatever, and do the same thing. Okay? All right. So, um, we actually missed some, hello. The whole point of the whole spreading is to make sure it goes to the very, very edge and it did not here. So I'm going to give that a second to grab and dry. This one pretty much did. You could also use um, score tape for this. Um, I used to. Works really well. That one did. Okay. Um, it works really well. It holds. It's a good um, double sided tape. All right, and then you're going to do the same thing here and here. Think of it like scoring. That's what we're doing. Okay. So, speaking of scoring, there it is. So this is chipboard. So the paper has to wrap around the chipboard. It's not just an easy peasy fold. So I'm gonna fold it again, ish and score it. So that initial fold is just kind of to get the ball rolling. This works really well with that super duper thin scrapbook paper that you've got. Um, I know we all got that really thin, just heavier than copy paper feel to it. Um, that works really great for wrapping chipboard. Um, if you want to wrap boxes, like actually one of the boxes I just put one of my orders in, um, I had to reuse one of our boxes that came into the house um, because I actually bought special boxes for some of the products that I have on there because like they're handmade products, you know, I want them to be in the nice comfy box so they don't get damaged, you know, stuff like that. Anyway. Um, it never dawned on me that one person would buy more than one, so <laughs> I had to uh, I had to get creative. But it was in one of the boxes that uh, one of my husband's computer pieces came in, so it had like biohazard on it, and I had to wrap that up because it wasn't a biohazard item. It was just. You know, it was just a decorative box. But scrapbook paper is really great for that. Sorry, I figured I would talk to you guys while I'm sitting here doing this kind of mundane but necessary stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of glue right here uh, against the edge of this, but I'm also going to pull it out a little bit. Well, I'm not going to do anything if the glue doesn't come out. There we go. The thicker paper is harder to use when you're wrapping chipwood. It's not impossible. It's just harder because it's thicker. Um, but it is absolutely possible. 
because this is thicker paper because I didn't want to pull more paper out because I already had this paper out so I figured might as well use it right so Just trying to get this wrapped around this chipboard here. Right. And that initial bend will help it get over that first little curve. And then once you fold it again, you're kind of, that's what I mean by wrapping it around. So I'm going to do this one first. And so while I was sitting there talking to you guys, um, I was pushing the corners in around the corner so they would wrap. So whenever you use the miter tool, you'll have just a, a little tiny bit extra instead of like a whole sheet extra you'll have just a little bit and I just fold it in just a little bit just push it in just like that and then when you wrap it it's nice and pretty like that okay. same thing with all of these I'm going to put a bead right across the chipboard here and then up this is all going to get covered anyway, but I still want to make sure that it stays down. And I'm using uh, the Fabri-Tac because it's, it grabs a little bit faster, I think. Could be just my imagination or many years of using it. I have no idea, but I do like the Fabri-Tac. I've always used, Fab well, not always, but there was a time when I didn't even know what Fabri-Tac was. I was like, wait, why are you using fabric glue on paper? Yeah, I was that person. I think we all might have been that person at some point, you know, because we have to learn. We don't just get born and know everything. Although that would be kind of cool, you know, to just have knowledge in your brain. It'd be pretty awesome. All right. Okay. And then there was one. And we're going to do the inside of the spine as one of the last few things we do with the construction of the book. Because that actually, I have, well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Because I have a spine, um, it's, it's my hinges where my pages go. And I have to put that on here. Okay, so it's starting to come along, it's starting to look like a book. What you think? See, I bet y'all were worried, like, how in the world? Have faith, little ones. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, although I do kind of like the the um, offset. Um, let's see. I don't know if I want to do this or if I want to do something different. Um, let me think, let me think. So I had, I had pulled this out 
but I had also pulled out a sheet of paper to go in there too. But I don't know how this will work with the cover pieces. I don't know. I think that might work out. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. All right, so we'll save that for something else. And then this one, we'll take it to about here. Make sure there's a nice, good overlap. And then cut that, save that. It's gonna sit like this. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this to this instead of gluing the paper to this. Glue this to that. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. All right. So let's do a bit of glue down here. Down here. Like so. Crap. Who knows what I forgot to do? The glue on the plastic. That's what I forgot to do. Oh my gosh, got them all. Okay, let's try that again. All right, and there we go. And then you just kind of burnish that down. You can use anything and everything. You can use a roller. You can use, you know, scratchy pad thing. A spatula, that's what I was using before. I do like the spatula, it's nice. Although, <laughs> not really why I brought it over here, but it works. All right. I'm just gonna push this down a little bit so it kind of forms that fold. Can you see right there? It's forming that fold. So now I can fold it here. And flip it over. And fold it here. And then flip it over one more time. And We're going to need glue on these guys underneath here. So, again, I'm going to glue the chipboard or in the crease of the chipboard.
And when you glue this down, you, you kind of want to put that crease in this little pocket here. Because what that's going to do is it's going to allow your book to close. Then I'm going to do the same thing, but on this side. And then push that down like a closure glue. And again, we're going to push this down. You want to give it some effort, um, some oomph, because you really want to get that into that crease. Because otherwise, if you don't, what's going to happen is your paper is going to buckle when you try to fold it. And then it's not going to lay flat. But if you crease it right there, before it dries, you shouldn't have an issue. All right, now we have our book. Cool, huh? And the inside still needs to be done. I think it turned out quite nice. All right, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to save this. We're going to put this away so I don't lose it. And then we're going to cover, not right now because the spine or the, the, um, the hinges have to go in first, but we're going to cover this here and I should have four of these, but I only have two. So I'll have to make two more, unless I didn't cut them out, but I'm pretty sure I did. So these are going to say here like this, we're going to have the, um, having such a hard time remembering the word hinges, I have the hinges here, the hinges take some time to do though. I mean, it all kind of takes time to do no matter what you're doing. And then. Nope, that's not it. Oh, there you are. I was like, wait a minute. Let's show you the outside since it's going to be the one that's done. So you could leave it like this and then put these on the inside. That's an idea. Because I kind of like this. I don't know. I'm kind of digging this. And then we can put these on the inside like this. Here. And then here. Okay, I think I like this. 
and keeping this like that on the outside. I think that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I'm actually going to let this dry. Um, I want to make sure that it dries nice and upright so that it will open and close properly. Um, you don't want to lay it dry flat because then you're going to have a hard time trying to move it around. So just set it just like this and let it dry like that. So anyway, that's it for today, guys. We got our, we got our book constructed. Look at that. So anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.